All right, I guess we're doing it. We're redesigning the Fiat Multipla. So here's what my own brief is for this little project is to remove the front fascia. Like I, I don't like these round shapes right here. I don't like the round uh, lights here. I don't like the roundness in general for this car. This whole surface right here is round. This is round. We have these things that are round right here. So what I want to do basically is to sharpen everything up. So I want to sharpen up this shoulder line, add it, add some sharpness to that, add some sharpness to this as well. But I want to keep the weirdness of the Fiat Multipla. So I'm not going to redesign it and make it into something boring, boring and generic. This is a special car, even though it's ugly, it's special. You know, there are cars like that. There are ugly and special. So keeping the weirdness of the car is essential for this redesign. But at the same time, I want to make it a lot more modern looking. So we're going to change the headlights here, change the bumper, the whole front and work on the wheels as well. Of course, I can't have these plastic things right here and details such as the uh, side view mirrors right there. We're going to change those the handles to door handles to open the door and tiny details like that. But right now, let's jump into the actual redesign video. So I'm, it's easier to show you than to just sketch like this on it. All right, so this is going to be a bit of a challenge. I have actually done this video before, and that was back in 2016, but that was more of a, just a joke video, how to uh, redesign the, the Fiat Multiply. You can go and check it out. I'm gonna leave a card up in the uh, corner right here, so you can go check it out if you want to do that. But as you saw in the beginning, I've gotten so many, I've received so many comments about this car to redesign it in a proper way. So that's kind of what I'm gonna do in this video. Uh, make it a little bit more serious and uh, try to really put some some effort into modernizing the design and that's the whole point of this video is to modernize it not change it as I said in the beginning as well I want to keep the weird features of this car which is pretty much the double bonnet or the double hood you have the lights up there in the A pillar which is very unique and very weird and that's kind of wanna, what I want to keep in this new design. So what I want to do is to clean up and to, you know, remove all that 90s design, the roundness of it. I, th I don't know, just the 90s was just such a weird era for car design. All cars had these very round shapes and it did, I, I don't feel like they had any specific uh, definition to the design. Everything was very round and no sharp lines and so on. I mean, if, it, I think the 80s was, 80s and 90s was the worst era of car design, in my opinion, because it, everything just went south from the 60s and 70s, and then you step into the 80s, everything was super boxy, and then came the, around came the 90s, and everything just changed again to this melted cheese style looking uh, cars. So what I want to do with the, with the Multipla here is to bring it into modern times, and by that I mean add some definition to it and give it some confidence in the design and I do that by creating some uh, defining lines to it and just adding some some sharpness to the edges and also of course updating the front fascia and the headlights and also the lights above up there in the A pillar I don't know if they're uh, should I call them headlights or A pillar lights or something else I'm not sure but the lights <coughs> they're going to get updated as well and also remove the plastic trim on the side, uh, put some more modern wheels on it and work on just a tiny little bit on the uh, side mirrors as well. So what I'm doing right now is, um, as you know, I'm using Airbrush, I'm using Photoshop, I'm using a Wacom tablet that plugs in USB straight into the, co into the computer, just one cord, good to go. And I uh, that tablet obviously has a pen, so I'm not using a mouse for these type of renders that would suck so I'm, I'm using a tablet with a pen and pressurized brushes and right now I'm adding some highlights to the initial shapes that I got going here so you see the you see the top line that goes uh, right below the uh, the windshield or the windscreen I want kind of that's that flow that curve I want that curve to be duplicated in the front so I kind of want to have two similar lines and uh, geometries in the front and then just 
almost as if I just copy pasted the front and added it up below the windshield. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm trying to get that same kind of shape that I have down at the, uh, the, the front uh, to, to have that duplicated in the top as well. And also, as I said before, I'm using airbrush a lot. Airbrush and then hard eraser, uh, just to get the smoothness of the shading going. Because you can think, you think of it, if you're using a solid brush and you want to have some nice transitions between different shades, it's really hard to get that with a solid brush. It, you kind of can't get it because every single time you paint, you're gonna have a solid uh, color. And to be able to mix those, it's a lot easier if you're using airbrush. And that's the reason why most of the times, especially when, my, when I start out like this on a sketch, I use airbrush to kind of blend the surfaces in together. And if I want a sharp shoulder line like I do right, right here, I just use a hard eraser to erase whatever, whatever airbrush I don't need and then fill in the same, the line with a highlight, which I'm going to do later in this video. So right now I'm just working on some details such as the side skirt, if you want to call it that, um, to have some sort of a wraparound plastic piece that goes at the bottom. That could be for protection or whatever you want, but it makes it look a little bit more real. Same thing here, back to the airbrush to add some more layers. And if you want to keep it, uh, keep it easy for yourself, you want to rotate the canvas so that you don't have to rotate the actual tablet that you're sketching on. It's a lot easier to just hit R in Photoshop and rotate the canvas so you're comfortable when you're sketching. So right now I'm gonna jump in and start to define the face of this of this car that is still gonna look super weird but I wanted I, I want to have uh, I want to keep the weirdness but make it modern because honestly if I had the option uh, option to buy this car the original one I probably would just because it's such a unique shape I can't think of any other car that has this shape so that's kind of uh, special and I really wanted to keep that but at the same time just modernize it with some new lights and new front fascia and also sharpen up the whole design. So here I think the uh, the front looks a little bit too simplistic. Fiat is not a Fiat is not a brand that uh, that really brags about uh, how cool their designs are. Their designs are very simple and especially this car is all about function. You have three uh, seats in the front row and that weird A-pillar light I'm guessing has some function to it, that's why they designed it this way. But at the same time, I want to add some design features to this car that makes it uh, a little less, uh, a little more complex, and I wanted to add that to that fender that goes down right, above the, above, uh, right in front of the front wheel. And of course I'm doing the symmetry, so I'm doing the exact same thing on the other side, adding that tiny fender that goes down. Same thing here, adding some some complexity, I don't, I don't know if you can call it complexity, but some features in the front that makes it more interesting to look at. And this can even be a, be an electric car. Uh, it it kind of fits that segment, but still I wanted to have an intake or some hole in the hood right there uh, to go with the lower black piece that's on the bumper. Another thing that I thought was not fitting for today's cars are the uh, side mirrors, so I wanted to change the shape of that from the half circle shape to more rectangular shape and that goes with the rest of the design language of this redesign. More sharper lines and more straight lines, horizontal and vertical lines that just play together. So this is what I was talking about earlier to uh, really define the edges of of a car you add highlights and as I, as I mentioned before uh, that, uh, it depends on where the light source is, and that's how you determine where to put these white dots and these white lines. Not every single edge is going to have them. If the edge is facing away from the light source, that means that it's in the shade, and that, that means that it can't have a strong highlight. So you have to think about the light source before you jump into creating these highlights and burn points. So I duplicated the headlights here to create some depth to show that it's actually something sitting behind the glass of the uh, headlights. So I duplicated the white and made it a little bit gray 
so that you have a surface that's sitting there and that can house the LEDs and the whole um, light assembly. And we can also go in and define it more if we want to do that, that's what I'm doing right now. Just creating some separation between the pieces because as you know everything uh, is manufactured and when they do manufacture these parts they come in separate parts so that means that in between every part you need to have a cut line or a section line and that can be done either with just a white line or as I did right there a black line and now it's time to update the wheels these plastic covers do not work today so I want to have some more modern wheels and this is straight from a Fiat 500. I just copied that and made it fit into this sketch. I think it fits good, it looks good and uh, fits the whole style of this car. And then I want to define the rear as well. Uh, I want to remove that weird looking rear light. Uh, even though this is not a rear view, you can still see it from this view so I had to remove that and also work on the silhouette of that rear part to make it fit that sharp shoulder line that I just created. And this is all about adding some light to the headlights to make it look like it's actually turned on. And this is a specific layer called, which is in a blend mode called Color Dodge. So if you have it in Color Dodge, you get these cool reflections just by using a simple airbrush and a light blue color. I think it looks really cool. And it's the same, it's the same uh, process here, I just put out the airbrush and then I use an airbrush eraser because this is light so I don't want any sharp edges on this light. I want it to be smooth transitions and like a smooth beam that comes out from the front. So for that reason I'm using the airbrush eraser instead of a hard eraser which I would normally do if I was sketching a body part or something else. So right now I'm just going to add some final details to this sketch such as changing, changing the handles, add some cut lines for that. I'm going to add the uh, or uh, transform the side indicator, that yellow dot that you see right there. I'm going to change that into something more modern looking. And that's about it. This was a super fun redesign. I'm pretty happy with the results actually. I mean it's a multiply, you can't really make it into a very beautiful car but it can. you can make it look cool and uh, interesting and I think I managed to do that with this redesign. If you like this kind of videos hit the like button, if you disliked it hit the dislike button and of course if you like this kind of content feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'm the Sketch Monkey. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.